Nate. Today's tutorial is going to be one that uh, has been requested in the comments. It's going to be how to use the gyro sensor to make your robot drive straight. So before we get started with that, I want to mention a couple things. One of them is uh, at 300 subscribers, we're going to be doing a giveaway. So if you like the content I'm sharing, please consider subscribing to get an entry into that giveaway. Make sure that you interact with my videos. So you comment in them, you ask questions, and we'll get you an entry into that 300 subscriber giveaway if you do those things. The other thing is that I've been 3D printing a lot lately. So um, I will have some pictures of the things I've 3D printed in the end of this video. But um, if you want anything 3D printed, I can 3D print it and ship it to you. Um, just let me know. I've been doing like it as a business, so I do charge for it. But you know, just hit me up in my business email. I'll drop that in the description, and we'll see if we can you know discuss some some of those things with you guys if you have any interest in that. All right. With that said, let's get started. So, um, like I, we mentioned, we are going to be making the gyro sensor, you know, make our robot drive straight. So a lot of times, you know, with weight uh, difference on both sides, and um, say you know, large attachments, or just in general, sometimes your robot just has a drift on one side, right? So to correct that, what you want to do is you want to, um, you know, that's what we're going to be doing today. So what you want to do is start off by dropping some reset blocks down. So for everything you're going to be using, so we're going to be using two drive motors, right? So a, mo uh, a reset block for each one, and we're going to be using the gyro sensor. So with th that, we want to reset the drive motor, so make sure it's the correct port B and C. Click reset. And then same thing for the gyro sensor. Correct port and reset. So now that we've reset everything, basically the point of this is resetting it so we know that it's going to start at zero at the beginning of this program. So we have a place to start at. So now that we've done that, what we want to do is we want to move into a variable block. So variable right here. I use variables very often, so if you don't know what they mean, I think I've uh, actually made a previous video on how to use them and what how they can benefit you. Basically, it stores a value, and you can modify multiple blocks with just modifying one. So I'll explain that in just a little bit when we get farther into the program. So you drag the variable up here, you click add variable, and then you just type in a name for this block. So in our case, we set it to speed is the name. So you make sure it's on right, numeric, and then uh, leave that. Next, what you're going to do is add a loop. Loops, basically, whatever you put inside of this loop, is going to, it's going to repeat that function a certain amount of times. So basically, um, you know, rather than have to write, say, drive forward, turn, or, you know, like if you want to, like, shake your robot, drive forward and backwards, and then do it again and again, you can just put it in a loop. You know, it will repeat whatever's inside multiple times. So once you have the loop down, you want to drop three switches inside of it. So it'll look something like this. If your program looks like something like this, then you're doing it right. So now what you want to do is set those loops to the correct sensor. So obviously we're not using the touch sensor. We want to set those to the gyro sensor. So go to gyro sensor, oops, gyro sensor, compare angle. Set them all to that. Gyro sensor, compare angle. Gyro sensor, compare, oops, compare angle. So now what we want to do is obviously make sure it's on the right port still. And we want, what we want to do now is we want to set different states on these gyro sensor blocks. So in this one, we want to set it to less, 10, less than. That one's good. On this one, we want to do the opposite. So what's opposite? Greater than. And then on this one, we want to do equal to. So now what we are, you guys might be able to get an idea of where this program is going. Basically, we're going to say, if the gyro sensor is reading less than something, do a certain function. If the gyro sensor is reading more than something, do this function instead. And if the gyro sensor is reading equal to something, skip the first, skip these two functions and just do this one only. So basically, um, let's set this to zero. This is your gyro sensor degree count. So we want to set our threshold to zero because it's at zero right now because it's reset. So reset to zero. We want to set this to zero. So you guys can kind of understand. Basically, what we're going to be doing is if the gyro sensor is less than zero degrees, we know our robot's angled, so we want to turn it to the right side. If our gyro sensor is more than zero degrees, we know our robot's angled, so we want to turn it to the opposite side, the left, uh, the left side, I think it was. And then if our sensor is equal to zero, we want to just turn, uh, make it drive straight. So let's, uh, let's get the rest of that in there. So drop three drive blocks, one in each one. 
Make sure your drive blocks are on the correct motors, B and C. Yep, we're good to go. So now what we want to do is turn this on. The reason is we don't want to have a limit of rotations because our loop is going to stop the whole program anyway. So we don't want to also you know, limit rotations when it comes to curves. So we want to just set those all to on. You also want to add a variable block before each of these drive blocks. So variable here, variable here, variable here. So let's talk about what you are going to do with those. So you want to go in here and you want to click read. So instead of write this time, you want to click read. Read numeric. Same thing for all of them. Read numeric, read numeric. Basically, what you're going to do is plug this in to your speed, and you can see why I named it speed now, because it's going into the speed section of your drive blocks. So what that makes it is, depending on your wheel size and things like that, your robot drives different speeds. Like, our wheels are pretty big, so we would drive faster than a robot with smaller wheels. So we usually, in this, in, with this kind of program, you don't want to drive super fast because you don't want to have the you know, driving super fast conflict with you actually trying to make the change of your robot driving straight. So you, you, we usually limit it to about 20% speed, but obviously, like I just mentioned, your wheel size will matter. So if you have smaller wheels, you might want to say 30% speed or something like that. So to make it easier for you guys to tune to your robot, rather than having it to adjust, say, 30% speed here, 30% speed here, 30% speed here, and then maybe that's too fast, so you need to go back and change all of them to 20, um, you can just, the variable block actually makes it so you just change this one block value, and it'll change all of the speeds for you. So if I put 15 here, it's going to set all the speeds for all three of these blocks to 15. If I change it to 25, it'll set them all to 25, etc. So in our case, like I said, we want to do 20. And the last thing we want to do is we want to, um, well, actually, sorry about that. I skipped a step. We, there's two things that we want to do. So we want to put the curve in here. So if it's, um, you know, if it's less than zero, we want to curve about one to two. So you can, you can set it to one. Depending on your curve, you might need to increase this value. So usually two is about okay. And in this case, you want to do the opposite. So what's the opposite? Negative two. In this case, we're just, we're already at zero degrees. Our robot's straight right now, so we don't want to put a curve on it. We just want to, you know, have zero turn, and we want to just drive straight. So now you can, you know, visualize this program a little bit better. However, I want to mention that if this program's giving you problems, like it looks like it's turning the wrong way or something like that, um, to correct the curve, then you may need to change these two values. Um, depending on your motor orientation, you may need to change these. So these might be opposites. So like if your robot looks like it's doing something funky, you might need to change it to negative two and two. That way, you know, depending on your, ro your motor orientation. So the last thing, now the last step, is to, you know, your distance. So right now your robot's just gonna drive straight unlimited because you don't have anything interrupting your program. So you wanna change this loop to, let's see, motor rotation and set to rotations. Now you need to change it to one of your drives. So in our case B, you wanna change this value to greater than or equal to. And this right here is going to be how your distance you wanna drive. So if you wanna drive, say, one rotation, you just set it to one. If you want to drive 1.5 rotations, 1.5, oops, sorry about that, I did 2.5, 1.5, etc. So this is going to be your distance that you want to drive. And then uh, that, that's the program, so it should work for you guys. If you, you know, if it's not working, please comment in the section and, you know, I'll give my best advice on how you, maybe where you went wrong, things like that. If you... Uh, learned something today and you think that it will benefit someone else, make sure to share this channel. I hope you guys did benefit from this and I hope you did learn from it. All right, um, I'll see you guys next time. Again, the photos of my 3D printing is going to be in the end. See you guys in my next video.